Cardiovascular diseases has been explained a lot on this channel. We have already discussed the risk factors, the stats, and the seriousness of a cardiovascular disease in a person's life. Now it's time to talk about factors which are going to lower the risk of cardiovascular diseases. To know more, you have to watch this video till end, so stay tuned. everybody this is your nutritionist on the go Kamaldeep Singh Ojla from Eru Diet Nutrition and I'm back with one of the most important topic we have been talking about cardiovascular diseases for a long time now we have discussed so much detail about these cardiovascular diseases now it's time to focus on the most important part the therapeutic part so before starting the video if you have not watched the previous videos of cardiovascular disease playlist i urge that you have to watch them from the starting till now so that you have a good hold on this topic so today we are going to talk about what factors or what are the things we have to do to lower cardiovascular disease risks also before starting the video i would like you guys to subscribe to my youtube channel and hit on the notification bell icon so the next time i post any video related to health and nutrition you don't miss it you can also follow me on facebook and instagram to cover all my media platform so you do not miss any information that i post anywhere so let's start with the factors which lower the cardiovascular disease risk or let's say what are the things that we have to do to lower our cardiovascular diseases so on my board i have divided the factors into three main classification but in this video we will only cover two of them the last topic i want to cover in a different video so let's start from this side of the board and what changes do we have to make in our diet so that the cardiovascular disease risk drops if you have a heart problem already this is very essential for you if you don't want to get a heart disease this is again very essential for you so let's start with the first one number one fiber and i've placed a green tick on that which means fiber is important the more the better now there is a very crucial balance between fiber intake for one's gut health but we are not talking about gut health over here we are talking about heart health over here so i would recommend anywhere around six to eight servings of vegetables or fiber rich food in your diet now that fiber rich food can come from in form of nuts in form of seeds in form of vegetables which are the best source of fiber the best one and even fruits okay now if you are a diabetic and you have a heart problem obviously you have to stay away from fruit or you have to limit your fruit intake to a minimum but other than that the more fiber you eat the better your health is going to be so you can switch your plain wheat corn maize and white rice with more complex forms of carbohydrates which have more fiber like brown rice like oats the steel cut or rolled oats are better versions rather than the pre-cooked and dehydrated oats that are ready to eat in about two to three minutes also millets are the best form of grains available to us so you can use millets in form of porridge you can use millets in form of your bread or in form of your chapati also so go for more complex grains which have more fiber again if you are a diabetic you need to keep your grain intake in check okay so moving on next omega-3s now let's clear out some air on omega-3s first the only good source of omega-3 is good fatty fish most of us are vegetarians the rest of us don't eat fish on a regular basis so the only person who can achieve the limit of omega-3s on a daily level is someone who eats about let's say 150 to 200 grams of fatty fish every day very rare to find i know i can't i know you can't so omega-3 sources such as almonds chia seeds flax seeds fatty fish or supplementation are going to help us so if you are 
suffering from a heart disease, you should have omega-3 supplement or omega-3 foods in your diet. So next is antioxidants. So what antioxidants do, these are the compounds which reduce the free radical damage, okay, the, the oxygenation of the oxidative damage of your organs, of your vessels, of your cells. So antioxidants basically help our body regenerate and regrow and repair our cells. So when it comes to cells, organs and organelles and tissues, they go following up. So we can get these antioxidants from fresh vegetables, fresh fruits, also nuts and seeds, and all other sources, healthy sources of foods, which are mostly in their raw form. Okay, so with the least amount of cooking, we can get these antioxidants. The best sources of antioxidants are the spices. That is why I recommend everybody to drink turmeric and cinnamon milk every day. It is the best form of antioxidants. So let's move on next. I have placed two foods that you have to totally cut off from your diet right now. There is no more time to lose. You have to cut these foods from your diet right now. So number one is processed food. See, anything that is coming out of a package or a container or a tin or whatever, it is a processed food. More likely it is a processed foods, okay? Let's avoid all processed foods. Let's avoid bread, pastas, crackers, cereals, ready-made soups ready-made cornstarch meals, flavor additives, all these things which are highly processed should be avoided along with biscuits and along with other forms of confectionery or bakery items. All these processed foods should be avoided. There is a chance that you can have some of these foods if you do make them at your home. At least you're not highly ultra processing the grains or the pulses or whichever food commodity that you are using. And secondary, you're not adding any chemicals or stabilizers or anything gunk or junk into that food. So if you can prepare it at home with clean ingredients, it's good for you. And I'm not talking about home cooked vegetable oil cakes. Okay, you need to stay away from them. The last item on this list is refined everything. See, everything that is refined, let it be refined carbohydrates, refined grains, flour, uh, refined sugar, refined oil, and last but not the least, refined salt. You have to stay away from all these refined, chemically processed and ultra modified food products. Make these changes in your diet as soon as possible. So now let's move on to the second column in this video that is what lifestyle changes do I have to make so that my cardiovascular disease risk decreases. Number one, quit alcohol. We've talked about it in the last video also. Alcohol is one of the major factors which increases the risk of cardiovascular accidents and diseases. So we have to quit alcohol ASAP. And I'm not talking about that you can go from a regular drinker to occasional drinker. No, if you want to make changes in your life, you have to follow it with discipline. No alcohol. All right, period. Next is smoking. Again, it is in a correlation with the alcohol. We are not going to have anything which is going to harm our respiratory system and decrease the quality of our life. Quit smoking. Quit drinking. The next is exercise. Okay, okay. To improve the cardiovascular function, to improve the arterial function of your arteries, to improve the respiratory capacity of your body to improve the overall health of your body you have to start some sort of exercise okay so let it be walking cycling yoga light exercise stretching whichever is comfortable for you start some sort of exercise so that your body makes these changes adapts to these changes with a healthy diet change your lifestyle and get the proper, the total benefit and lower your risk of cardiovascular diseases. So what is the last topic on our list? Sleep. I have seen many people who are poor sleepers. Now, what do I mean by that? What are poor sleepers? People who do not get enough quality sleep. They do sleep for seven or eight hours, but they get up twice or thrice, 
check on their phone, turn off the alarm and sleep again, go to washroom, go to urinate a couple of times, wake up from bad dreams or anything negative. They keep on scrolling all these negative thoughts in their mind. All these people are bad sleepers. Sleep is the time when you recover. Sleep is the time when your body heals. Sleep is the time when your brain goes into a reboot mode. Sleep is one of the most essential element of your life and it will boost your overall health if you are having a good sleep. So, if you are a mobile user, if you are a habitual news, news channel watcher, quit it. Quit using mobile about one and a half hour before your time of sleep. Do not watch any news channels, okay? They are going to keep you up. Take the television set, take your LCD or LED, whatever is in your bedroom, shift it to another room. You do not want a television set or a LED in your bedroom. This is the worst habit that you can have and it makes you a poor sleeper, trust me, okay? So remove these issues, okay, which hinder with your sleep. If you wake up, at 7, don't set an alarm for 5.30. Don't set an alarm for 6.30, okay? To know what is your actual sleep capacity, try waking up without an alarm for three consecutive days. You will actually get to know that what your regular sleep requirement is. Note the time when you go to bed. Try to keep in mind the time you fall asleep and take in notice the time you wake up. Calculate all of these things, you will get the number of hours you need for a good sleep. Try waking up without any distractions or without somebody waking you up or something waking you up. The deeper your sleep, the healthier you are. So guys, this was it. This is the part one of the factors which help us lower our cardiovascular disease risk. Wait for the second video and I will discuss the other remaining factors. I want you guys to have a good learning experience with Erudite Nutrition. If you guys have any questions or queries, put them in the comment section below. You can contact me on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, however you feel fit. If you are local to my city, you can visit me personally and we can sort out the ailments in your lifestyle and in your diet so that you live better, you live healthier, you live more independent and stress free. Again guys, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, do subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell icon. Also like my page Erudite Nutrition on Facebook. Also follow me on Instagram at Erudite Nutrition. I hope you like this video. If you like it, do share it with your near and dear ones. Stay tuned for more. I'll see you guys next time. Until then, take care.